Don't you love the sugar rush you get from one of these peanut butter cups? Like for about three minutes you feel like you could run straight through a cinder block wall? Hello and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Um, unforeseen circumstances, unforeseen in a good way, don't worry, have afforded me some unexpected time, extra time this week, so I thought I would seize the opportunity and make an extra video for you this week. So I thought I would go ahead and do my uh, the February edition of my bargain bag feature. Yes, this is the new monthly feature where I take two mystery grab bags of seven CDs each and open them up uh, live, so to speak, on camera and see what goodies I got. And in between the two bags, I review a bargain bin CD that I picked up somewhere, somehow. But anyway, before I open the two new grab bags, I thought I would give you a quick rundown of what was in the previous two grab bags. I actually just recently got done listening to all 14 of the CDs, and they were all mostly what I expected. For instance, this uh, Kurt McKee guy here was definitely a uh, acoustic guitar, Christian gospel folky, kind of cheesy sort of guy. I don't think a verse went by without him mentioning God or Jesus or the Lord or you know, that kind of stuff. And again, like I said in my previous bargain bag video, I don't mean to make fun of or criticize or mock this kind of music if, if it's what you're into, you know, God bless you, no pun intended. Uh, but it's just definitely not my cup of tea. Uh, so yeah. And by the way, if, if any of you want any of these CDs, uh, just let me know in the comments. Uh, we can find a way to communicate in another way where I can get your address and I can mail them to you. I won't even make you pay for postage because honestly they're probably not worth it. Uh, but anyway, uh, this uh, Lady Cam, she was a uh, hip hopper. She's actually, I looked her up, she's from Dallas, Texas, I think, somewhere in Texas. And yeah, just not my thing. I'm not familiar enough with the nuances of hip hop or rap to know, you know, to really judge whether this was good or bad. So I couldn't be a judge of that, but uh, well, if you can look at the uh, track listing here, I didn't hold out much hope for this when I saw that the uh, person who designed the CD inserts couldn't make up their mind whether they wanted to uh, have the song titles in all caps or not. And once they made up their mind, they didn't bother going back to uh, make the rest of it consistent. Yes, I know I have at least one uh, regular viewer who's commented before, and he's a I don't know if he said he's a graphic designer or an amateur graphic designer or a freelance or whatever, but yeah, he can probably appreci appreciate the uh, the annoyance of inconsistencies like this, just like I can. So yeah, I didn't hold out much hope for that, and turns out I was right. Uh, this uh, prod and also I don't know how to pronounce this, so I'm going with Gaud's thumb. Uh, these were both very post grunge uh, sort of, you know. Possibly, this was a little more new metal than this. This was more post-grunge. Actually, this was more grunge, period. It sounded a lot like a Nirvana, Pearl Jam, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Those were not my cup of tea either. And uh, this was pretty much exactly what I expected it was going to be. The uh, This uh, is uh, contemporary classical music. You know, kind of avant-garde, instrumental stuff. Very weird. And quite boring, actually. And, of course, I knew what this was going to be. I mean, Antonio Vivaldi, uh, he did the Four Seasons. He's a classical comp composer. And this was good stuff. It's just I've got most of this on other CDs, so totally not interested in that. Um, and this Heavenly, this was kind of interesting. It was instrumental mostly, but had some uh, uh, wordless vocals in it, you know, just singing in the background, you know, ah, or la, la, la kind of stuff in the background. So... I would call this elevator music, but uh, I think most of my younger viewers, that term would probably be lost on them because I don't think elevators have had music playing in them in a long time. So uh, I guess uh, doctor's office waiting room music, maybe. You know, just kind of the, the, the generic sounding... I mean, it's pretty. It's just, you know, very fluffy. It's, it's stuff that's not meant to actually be listened to. It's just kind of, you know, background stuff. And uh, this was kind of interesting, but it, again, it just wasn't my thing. This is, you know, like I thought it was going to be very meditative kind of stuff. It has, it's interesting, it has two tracks on it. They're both like half an hour long. And the first one has a chant in it, 
over ambient instrumentation on the first track. The second second track was more uh, had more of an actual melody to it, and it was more of a of a song sort of thing. So it was, you know, interesting kind of kind of sort of. Then we move on to the Catherine Chase Band. This was kind of what I expected: uh, country mixed with Heartland folk rock sort of stuff. You know, Flannel City. You can see their uh, clothes there in the background, back uh, cover picture. And uh, this Susie Luxinger, uh, it's, she is very country, and I found out online shortly after after I posted my video, I decided to look her up, and she is actually, her real name is actually Susie McIntyre. She is the sister of Reba McIntyre, and you can definitely tell it from the music. I mean, very much follows her style, and vo her voice is very similar, so if you like Reba McIntyre, you'd like her. So, and again, you know, you want any of these CDs, mess, uh, drop me a comment in my video we can make arrangements and then we have uh, this gremlin uh this was kind of interesting uh it didn't really grab me enough to want to keep it at least not on first listen i might listen to it again once or twice just to make sure but yeah um indie rock sort of stuff they've done one or two albums besides this one so uh yeah if you like the indie rock check out gremlin it's g-r-m-l-n is how it's spelled yeah this album was called soon away by the way and then we have um, this one. I actually mispronounced her name in my in the last video. I noticed after the fact, I called her Melinda Leon. It's actually Melina Leon. You can see there is no D in her name. Uh, but uh, yeah, she's a, a merengue style Latin artist. Um, not bad. Again, merengue is just not my thing. But I do have a friend who I think would re really enjoy this. CD, so I think I'm gonna hang on to this for her. And then this one I almost kept. Um, it's uh, the artist is called Revenge, and this was kind of a uh, synthwave sort of thing. Uh, reminded me of uh, you know, Flock of Seagulls and that kind of stuff. You know, the the stuff kind of at the end of the synthwave or the the new wave era. This was a 1990 CD. You know, the, well, it was the song titles that caught my eye first. There was a song on here called Fag Hag, and another one called Surf Nazi, and uh, so I listened to it. And at first, it was it was pretty good, but then I. On the second and third listens, it just completely lost its appeal. The singer was just off key so much, and you know, on, on in some instances that can be charming, that can be an endearing thing, but it wasn't in this case. There's just it just kind of got grating. And another thing was the lyrics. The lyrics are not, are not printed on the uh, insert here, so I couldn't be sure, and I haven't taken the time to look up the lyrics. But it's like the lyrics were very, very bland and generic and had nothing to do with the song titles. At least, not that I could tell. So yeah, it just, yeah, this CD just completely lost its appeal very quickly for me, uh, sad to say. So so yeah, unfortunately that left me with just one CD out of that entire batch of 14 that I liked enough to keep. So, and it will actually be the one that I'm going to review after I open my first grab bag. So speaking of which, let's just get right on with it. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, no peeking, which is a very hard directive to follow because uh, I've decided that uh, every time I go to the store now, I've been picking up a pair of these grab bags because I knew I was going to make this a monthly feature. So until I do these videos, those bags are sitting on the shelf over there, mocking me, taunting me, saying, Come on, open me up. You want to see what's inside me, don't you? Come on, they don't have to know. You can staple me back up. No, I can't, because I want to make these videos authentic. I want to be real to my audience. I want to show them my reactions. I know I don't have a terribly expressive face, but still, I want to be true to my audience, as true as I can possibly be. So I give myself other things to do until it's time to film these videos. So anyway, without further ado, first grab bag. I'll clean that up later. Okay, without looking inside, let's take a look here. Windy. Okay, I don't know who you are, Windy, but uh, I'll give you a try. Mercury Records, 1999. As I said, I'm not afraid to listen to anything, so let's give that a try. Funland. Never heard of them. 
and I, I've never heard of Wendy either, so you're not alone, Funland. Album called Sweetness. Uh, seven tracks from Arista Records, 1993. <laughs> Track seven is obligatory cover for the kids. So, uh, okay. Something tells me these are going to be interesting CDs to listen to. So, uh, hmm, this looks like an indie rock sort of thing. Levator, or or possibly Elevator. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Give the indie rock thing a try, why not? Assuming that's what it is. And a swing and dance party. Oh. You might co you might want to cover your ears for the name of this record label. Moist Music. From what I can read of the track listing, it's a bunch of stuff that I have never heard of, so... Uh, hey, you never know when I'm going to be in the mood for a swing and dance party, right? And uh, this bag is, again, this bag is totally full of things I've never heard of. Rob Drabkin. Never heard of you, Rob. Something tells me country. Honey dipped ice cream. Sounds like a country song title. Girl from Country Floors. I don't know what makes a floor country. Anyway. Next one here, Saltman Knowles. Oh, Mark Saltman on bass and William Knowles on piano. That's the, how the band name comes. Uh, Pacific Coast, <clears throat> excuse me, Pacific Coast Jazz is the record label, so it is obviously jazz. I figured that out myself. Anyway, uh, yeah, I am totally up for jazz, so yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to that one. And the last one out of this grab bag is... Ben Folds. I know that name. Uh, you Don't Know Me. It's a, a promo single. I don't listen to much Ben Folds. I don't have any of his CDs in my collection, so uh, I've kind of been thinking about dipping into him a little bit. Well, I tried him a long time ago and just was not captivated by what I heard, and so much so that I can't even remember what it was that I tried out the first time, so maybe he's one of those artists that uh, I need to re-explore. Like I've, uh, in, re in recent months, I've dipped into several artists that I wasn't fond of before, came back to again, and ended up really enjoying. So, could happen with Ben Foltz. But anyway, now that the first grab bag is done, let's go ahead and take a look at the CD I'm going to review today. Uh, this is actually the first CD I pulled out of the first grab bag in my last bargain bag video. It is Dirty Little Secret by Stella Soleil. Now, she's actually a Greek-American singer... Uh, who was born Stella Katsudas, and uh, she's performed under several names such as Sister Soleil and most recently Dubwitch. Now early in her career she sang backup for artists such as Chem Lab and Ministry. Now this actually is a very much of a pop album. Um, it was done back in 2001 I think it was and you know Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, those were the artists that were you know really coming up in popularity at the time so that's what they wanted her to do. Basically, now, I was afraid, you know, I mean, looking at the cover art, she's there wearing uh, lingerie and whatnot. I was very much afraid that she was going to be, you know, the kind of all-out, over-sexualized Pop-Tart, as I've heard them described before, you know, like Britney and Christina. Uh, and the first track, called Kiss Kiss, that nearly turned me off of the album right there, because, you know, that was very much, you know, that kind of stuff. The, the, very, very, the very sexual kind of stuff. But actually from there the songs got better. And in fact Kiss Kiss is actually a cover of a Turkish song called Shimarik, which was popular several years earlier. Now I will admit that this stuff is almost never my kind of thing. Uh, I don't have any Christina Aguilar. I think I have one Christina Aguilar single. So you know that kind of subgenre sort of of fem young female pop I just have never cared for, but there's something I like about this album. As cheesy as it is, I mean, and some of the songs are pretty cheesy, uh, you know, that we have like Imperfect and Look My Way, Runaway Crush, and another one called Let's Just Go to Bed. 
those songs are actually as cheesy as they are they're really really catchy for me for some reason they're almost they're almost on the level of guilty pleasures and it's when i hear some of these songs it's just something kind of subliminal that reminds me of other songs that i love you know other songs from my past that are kind of guilty pleasures in the same way i'm not sure what it is um and there's one song on here called stand up that's it's it's meant to be a kind of self-empowerment anthem or something but its cheesiness kind of uh impedes it you know and then and then there are a couple of songs that are just all out and out cheesy and almost almost cringy in a couple of places uh like the first track kiss kiss and also there's a song called twilight that's almost too cutesy for its own good you know but uh, but yeah you know i i enjoyed it enough to want to hang on to it and who knows it could could even end up growing on me on repeated listens which is an almost frightening prospect in a way uh but yeah this is definitely not the kind of cd that i would have paid six dollars for on its own uh but i've been having so much fun with this bargain bag feature that take, to me it's worth it so uh yeah and I, I actually listened to uh there was an album she did before this called solarium under her under the name sister soleil and i was listening to the clips on that and that's it's much more it has much more elements of uh industrial and techno and a little bit of hip-hop in it which is really intriguing me so i definitely want to get my hands on that one so uh but yeah that is it for uh stella soleil but that's not it for this video because I have another bargain bag so let's get this one open i'll clean it up don't worry okay here we go. Disc one. Oh, it's one that I already have. Elizabeth and the Catapult, their first album, first album, I think, Taller Children. This is a really, really good album if you haven't heard it before. And I think I have a friend who I've got another CD set aside for him that uh, this one might be going to him. So uh, we'll see. But yeah, that's a really good album. I actually have not listened to their latest one, the one that came out, what, two years ago. And, uh, Okay, here we have Valiance, an album called Wayfaring. I think Valiance is the name of the band. Yes, produced by Salvatore Salierno and Valiance. 2002 Black Lotus Records. Oh, in, uh, they're located in Greece, so it's a Greek band. But the song titles are in English, so I assume it's English. Something tells me this is hard rock or metal, just because of the, the look of the cover. So that, that'll be an interesting one to listen to. Oh, for a minute I was going to say, oh, a Kate Bush CD. No, it's a tribute to Kate Bush. I guess they're all by the same artist. Eclipse featuring Gemma Price. I have actually never listened to Kate Bush, so... The the context of these covers would be lost on me, just because I'm not familiar with Kate Bush's music. Oh, a Beastie Boys single, Intergalactic. Cool. No problem with that. I kind of like the Beastie Boys. They're not a huge favorite of mine, but uh, I have no idea how to pronounce this band's name, so I'll just let you read it. Uh, Lemonade is the name of the album. Beyonce it ain't. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this will be interesting to listen to. So uh, Then we have Mark Maxwell, uh, probably a jazz saxophonist by the look of the cover art. The album is called And I Love Her, which was a, was that a back rack song, I think? Oh, You've Got a Friend, Spooky, Ode to Billy Joe, Tears in Heaven. This is going to be fun to listen to. I, kind, I like jazz covers when they're done right, so uh, yeah, I'll be interested to listen to this one. And the final grab bag CD is Balearic People. You got me. Oh, it's a uh, it's a uh, compilation. I, I see the word dub at the end of some of these uh, tracks, so it's obviously a remix or dub mix CD. So why not? What the heck? So okay. Well, that was an interesting pair of grab bags again. Uh, I can tell I'm going to have fun with this feature um, every month. I'm glad I came up with this, and I'm glad. Thank you, Sam Bennett, for giving me the inspiration to do this. I am having so much fun with it. 
And but I still I hope you haven't opened the last year grab bags. I love watching you do it. So uh, I hope you and the rest of my viewers are having just as much fun watching me do it. Uh, like I said, I don't have the most expressive face in the world, so it might be boring watching me pull the CDs out of the bag, but it's fun for me. What can I say? Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comments, suggestions, requests, constructive criticisms, any or all of the above, whether about this video, anything on my channel, or about music in general, tell me about it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, please be sure to subscribe as well. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And check out all my past videos to see what you might have missed. Also, I invite you to check out my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are linked to in the description below. They're all very much worth your time. They wouldn't be there if they weren't. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.